I tell you the truth, the devil has been on me this week. The devil told me that you don't want to you don't want to hear anything from 1 John, so change the subject. I told him he was a liar, but looking around this morning it may be more true. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's take some prayer requests. Let me put a, a person on your list without...
two days last week, and we had 76 boxes, so praise the Lord. That would have been well over 100 if we had worked the third day, so uh, I, I am amazed. I, I don't know how you do it, but God does. I look around, and most of the time you're... And, and one gentleman asked me when those ladies go lay those eggs, and I told him he better be quiet. <laughs> and, of course, the fellas never do that. But what I'm trying to say, they have a good time, apparently. If you haven't been out, let me encourage you, come out one day. And we just meet one day this week, Thursday. I'm anxious to see what they do. Uh, so give it a try. Can't you imagine being part? Uh, we, I think, what, about 1.9 million so far, somewhere close to that? Yeah, so we're close to 1.9 million copies of John and Romans going around the world. Uh, the statistics come back to us, or seven people will read and touch each copy. One person will get saved. Those of you who have had a part in Sea Line have been a part of 1.9 million people getting saved. Now, if you've never won them personal, one-on-one, -on -one, this is the next best thing. Uh, again, you cannot take anything with you. Still have not seen a U-Haul behind the hearse. Uh, the only way you can have anything over there is to send it ahead, and souls are definitely one of those things. So let me challenge you. Nine o'clock, actually, uh, Sue and I are there much early. You can come any time, probably after eight, and uh, get busy. And it's hard to get you out at 12, to be honest with you. But that's great. That's a good thing. Milford? Yeah. Yeah. So you pray for Milford and those that are up there. If you ever get a chance going through Cincinnati, please, please stop in. You'll be amazed and glad you did to see the the, the ministry there and how it functions uh, and all the scripture that got in the warehouse ready to be shipped out. All right. Anyone else want to say anything? God, in First John chapter 2, and again, being the teacher, I have the right and I take the right to come back. Verse 5, chapter 2, but whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God, what? Perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. What is the distinguishing mark about us that says we are a child of God? Well, we just read it. Love. Love manifests or perfects us in fellowship. Now, before you got saved... You didn't even like the church, probably. You probably knew some people in here that you thought, well, they just weren't living up to your standards, and you didn't like them. But there's something about it when you become a Christian, and you that is, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, realizing that you're a sinner. Suddenly, something changes in your life, and people are not quite as bad as you thought they were. The more you get to know them, you, you begin to like them. Now, that doesn't mean, uh, having said that, let me stop. When you become a Christian, it doesn't automatically, you go love everybody. It don't work that way. It, you have to work at it. You have to grow in Christ. But as you grow in Christ, what, what, what should be the thing that we see? Love. Love. Love expressed to one another. That's God's children. That's God's children. Now, the world, we're to love the world as Christ loved the world, for God so what? 
love the world. That's everybody out there. Now, are we to love them? Yes, to a point. Doesn't mean that we, what, join them. Scripture says in Corinthians, come out from what? Among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. This is what we're talking about here is the fellowship with God's people. Uh, how many like their family reunions? Uh, you know, family reunions used to be a big thing. Now it's a big thing as the police come to break it up. But uh, the church shouldn't be like that. There should always be love. Notice the distinguishing feature of, of a Christian who's maturing in Christ is love. And it shows forth. It, it's not always easy to love people. We have different personalities. And they sometimes clash. And, and, and we're going to fail. Don't, don't think that we're perfect all the time. I'm sorry to disillusion you. I make mistakes. And Sue has a long list of them. But she won't share them. That's why I love her. But whosoever keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. The evidence of knowing God is the manifestation of the love that we show forth. Remember last week I used uh, 2 Corinthians 4. As Christ shines into our hearts, we shine out. People see Christ through us. God could have come down, waved or whatever he would do, and everybody would have loved him. But then God would remember, I made them love me. Now he gives us the opportunity, a free will, where we love him because what? We want to. That's what it's talking about here. John is writing to a church that's being invaded by, and we're going to get to it maybe today, the Antichrist, those that are opposed to Christianity, those that wanted to make a change, you ever run into anybody in the Baptist church that wanted to make a change? If you haven't, you haven't been around long. That's why we have, uh, I think it's almost 200 varieties of Baptists alone today. And, and that's sad. That's sad. And it's usually, usually not a doctrinal thing. But he says, he that saith he abideth in him also, himself also to walk, even as he walked. We need to, if we say we're Christian, we need to walk the walk. And then we go down in the beginning of verse 8, we talked about it last week. Notice John deals with the negative. Now, we don't like negativity. But the truth is, again, verse 9, excuse me. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness. Now, that means uh, this word hate here. You know, we have arguments as Christians. And for a while, we families, even in families, we may not talk to each other. But in, in, when it co push comes to shove, my family, wherever they are, would, even though we have disagreements, would come to my aid. Uh, as God's children, the truth is what? We come to each other's what? Aid. We've been praying for people this morning on the list. And I, I trust no matter who we put on the list, you, you would be praying for them. That, and you're not, he that saith he's in the light. I think you'd be praying for a brother who, who has fallen and who is, we call it backslidden. And that doesn't mean moving to the back of the church. Some of you like it back there because I look better. The truth is you can't hardly see me. And I, I, got, I caught on to that, people. Notice verse 10. Negative, we have a positive. He that loveth his brother abideth in light. Now that light means you're, you're walking with God. You're in his light. You're in his way. And there is none occasion of stumbling. You're okay. Positive. Which would you rather be, positive or negative? 
I want to be positive. And the best way to be positive is to do it God's way. Unfortunately, we have the philosophy when all else fails, we'll do it God's way. Uh, and Baptists are well known for that. We go on down. There's so much I want to cover. Uh, verse 15. Notice, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now that doesn't mean backsliding for a period of time. The prodigal son was like this. He, he backslid till he sat in the hog pen realizing that what he thought was going to be a, a wonderful life was not. And in his father's house, even the servants had it bad, better. He came home. That, that's not talking about this type of person in the world, but those that go out and stay there. And I've seen over the years, the 55 years, people who I thought were quote unquote great Christians leave the church and live like the devil and never come back. That's what it's talking about. Love not the world, neither the things are in the world. If any man love the world, notice the love of the Father is not in him. The love of the Father is not in him. In verse 16, now that's where we left off last week about I was starting. We have here Satan's method of attack, his tactics when he comes a calling. It hasn't changed since the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 3, notice we have here in 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. Genesis chapter 3, remember when Satan was tempting Eve? He said to Eve in chapter 3, verse 6a, about the lust of the flesh, and he made it so good, it was good for food. And as Eve looked at it, she said, you know, I bet it does taste good. Satan used it when he was confronting the Savior after being 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness without eating. Uh, please do not try a fast like that. He said, first of all, command what? That the rocks be made bread because after 40 days of not eating, he was hungry. That's in Matthew chapter 4. That's the lust of the flesh. And Satan always comes like that. Right now he's making it very difficult for people to come back because he's using that. Uh, you know, once you go miss one week of church, the second week gets easier. Third week gets easier, and by the fourth, you're not even thinking about it on Sunday. Uh, don't Please don't go try and check that out for me. Stay here. But we got a lot of people that used to come to church, don't we? See, that, that proves it. Some of them, now again, not all of them, but some of them are actually afraid, and I understand that. And, and it, so we, since we do have uh, the, uh, well, well, let's see, I'm going to be careful. The senior uh, aspect here, more than anything, I understand why they are reluctant to come out into public. But uh, notice, then he goes on and uh, talks about the lust of the eyes. In Genesis 3, 6b, uh, it was pleasant to the eyes. You say, look how beautiful, smooth, and red. I'm assuming, I'm, I, I, we don't know what the fruit was. I'm, I'm using an apple. Uh, they don't know what the fruit was. And, you know, she says, hmm, tastes good, looks good. Uh, and then when he was over the Lord in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 4. He said, show, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He says, these are going to be yours without dying. The lust of the eyes. The pride of life. Said to Eve in the garden in Genesis 3, 6, 
See, it's a tree to make one wise. Won't kill you. It'll make you wise. These are Satan's tactics, and he always uses them. When Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4 again, the third time, says, Cast thyself down from the pinnacle of the temple, for the Lord has given his angels charge over thee. You know, it's like a thrill ride. Jump off, they'll catch you before you hit. Satan works that way. He's working that way today. He still does. It's always easy. You look out there in the world and you see them for a time. Notice, for a time, having a good time. And you're sitting in here having to listen to me. You could be at Fat Boys now enjoying a nice breakfast, right? But in the long run, who's going to win? Then he goes on, little children. Now, I want you to, not talking about babies. In some respect, we are all God's little children. But in this case, he's talking about babes in Christ, people who just got saved. Now, we don't expect them to understand doctrine. We, we teach them John 3.16. That's why we have in the seed line, we have the Gospel of John. It's the simple, simplest book in the New Testament. It tells about Jesus. It tells about his life. And then we give them Romans, which tells them how to get saved. We make it simple. It, it's a growth process. Little children, they're babes in Christ. It is the last time, as you heard, that the Antichrist shall come. My friend, the Antichrist was there in John's day. They were called Gnostics. They were teaching that don't worry about all this doctrinal stuff. Don't worry about how you walk. Just learn things. Knowledge is the way to go. Knowledge. Knowledge will build you up. My friend, uh, I'm going to make some of you mad, but you'll get over it. In our colleges today, we have people with great knowledge. Oh my, it breaks my heart how they're leading these young men and ladies away from the things that are right. Teaching them uh, that the Bible is uh, a good fairy tale, that knowledge is the way to go. The scripture says ever learning, but never able to come to the truth. That's where we are. That's where they were in John's day. The Antichrist. Antichrist is anybody that teaches against uh, the Bible or the Lord. Uh, we've had Antichrist all the time in our lifetime. How many remember Father Divine out of Chicago of all places? A couple of you. His theme song was all hell the power of Father Divine. Remember that, Brother G? Is that before your time? <laughs> That's when he died, the God movement uh, thing started. And we have Sung Young Moon from Korea who took him years to admit that he thought he was God. Uh, we have people all over the world today that says they're the Christ. In re reality, they're the Antichrist. They're not teaching the word of God. They're teaching a different way. And John said, we got to be on guard against that. And that's what he was fighting in his day. They went out from us, but they were not of us. I forgot. Isn't it amazing? Why didn't you tell me the older you get, the, the more you'll forget? I just read it. I think it's in John when the disciples said to Jesus, there's some over here teaching your name. Jesus' words were, they're not against us, leave them alone. Uh, not everybody that goes out is, is in this category. But a lot of people that go out uh, are anti-Christ. We've got a world today that's anti-Christ. Uh, I, I bet in the West Coast where, why is it everything that comes down the pike starts in the West Coast? All the bad stuff, and then it comes our way. 
But uh, God, uh, so much. But notice, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of, not all of us. Oh my, there's a lot of people out there demonstrating against the church. They're demonstrating against things that for the last, well, what's this, 2,000 years have we've upheld as the right thing to do. And now they're telling us for uh, that time we were wrong. We find that areas of our country now are backing the criminal over the victim. Uh, please don't get mad at me. Just read the headlines. They're more sorry for the victim or the uh, criminal than they are for the victim. That's what this is talking about. They went out. They've given up. I can remember when I was in school, back in the one-room schoolhouse, Brother Bruce. We begin the day with a Bible verse, by prayer, by the Pledge of Allegiance. Bible verses are gone, prayers gone, and you can't make them say the pledge anymore. We're slowly slipping away. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Now, some people take this to believe that you can pray for a special anointing of God's Spirit. Let me tell you a secret. You got it the moment that you got saved. When you said, Lord, I'm a sinner, save me, instantaneously the Spirit of God came and abides with us. He is the one that can give us all knowledge if we will allow him. God is a gentleman. He won't force us. We must want to. And when we want to, he'll help us. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth. And most people today out there know the truth. They know that the church is the truth. But if they accept it, they've got to change their lifestyle. And they don't want to change their lifestyle. God loves the homosexual. I've said that a few times and people have left the church. Listen for me before you leave, listen to this. He hates the sin that they do. In fact, we've got a whole uh, section in Genesis about Sodom and Gomorrah. But again, they say that it's not over homosexuality. But you have to go back and read the passage. <laughs> There's no mistake. But he that hateth his brother, notice, is in darkness. Excuse me. Come back across this column. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Most of those people out there know what's right and what's wrong. But again, they would have to change their habits, their lifestyles, and they simply don't want to do it. Now he goes on, who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. And we have a lot of Antichrist today. Notice what an Antichrist is. Someone that denies this book. I've witnessed to people about heaven and hell, and they say, well, I know I'm going to hell, and I'm already arranging a party when I get there. Oh, I feel so sorry for them. So sorry for them when they get there, and they're going to be so disappointed, so late. Remember the rich man and Lazarus? One drop of water was his mortal cry. What kind of torment can hell give us that just a little bit of water off my finger would give him any relief? Think about that. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same have not the Father. But he that acknowledged the Son have the Father also. See, when I accepted Jesus Christ the Son, the Father came along. 
Because the Father so loved the world, what? That he gave his only begotten Son. Let that therefore, let that therefore abide in you, which we have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. It's, it's a hard thing to see loved ones in your family, family split up that used to go to church and now they won't go to church. And you do all that you can to get them back in and they still won't go to church. But let me tell you this, don't give up. Don't give up on them. Keep them in your prayers. Keep witnessing to them. Let them know that you love them. Bible doesn't tell us how long the prodigal son had been gone. But the Bible gives us indication that the father every day went out and looked down the road. Our heavenly father looks for us every day. He looks for us. He wants us to come home. If you're, you're out of fellowship, that's all you have to do is come home. Remember the story when the prodigal son came home? What did the father do? Give him a lecture? I told you if you went off, this would happen. No, he didn't. He hugged him. I think he did a little dance. He ordered the servants to prepare a feast. Fix the fatted calf. This my son which was lost is now found. And when we see people that backslide and go out that door and they commit and they live like the devil out there and they come back in, that's how most of the time we as Baptists treat them. I told you if you go out there that would happen. We should hug them, bring them back into the fold and thanks, give God thanks that they've returned before it's eternally too late. I believe, and I'm going to close with this, the the trumpet could sound at any moment. The trumpet could sound at any moment. Think about that for a minute. We're out of here. Preacher's already said, you know, his, his, his suit will be up here, his glasses will be up here. I don't know if he wears dentures, but if he does, they'll be up here. Be nothing but a pile of clothes. I can see those that are left rummaging through them. Shouldn't be worrying about that. Scripture says you'll be eternally doomed. For this cause God will send a strong delusion that you'll believe a lie. My friend, the word of God is real. Now, the lesson was, we would say on the boring side today, there was no big stories. But we're living through this. We're seeing the Antichrist. We're feeling the effect of the Antichrist. I, I hope our governor was correct. He promised not to put us back in our houses. I hope he can keep that promise. I hope that we get some of the rights back that we've lost. Pray for our leaders. I pray that they'll come to the right mind. And begin to help the people instead of themselves. We serve a God who loves us and cares for us. He's made America great. And that's not talking about our president today. I believe we've been great because we've not only followed him, but we've been kind to Israel. I will back any man that stands with Israel. That's scripture. I'll back any man that stands with uh, against abortion, won't you? Can, can, can a person be a Christian in right fellowship? Notice how I said that. You can be a Christian and backslidden, but can you be in right fellowship and believe in abortion? Think on that. I personally have a real problem with that. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. How can that, you know what? How can they kill a baby that's born and healthy? God have mercy upon those doctors. That's where we are today. 
And what John is trying to do here is getting us right, because I believe the trumpet is going to sound. It's closer than we've ever thought. We've heard it for our entire, I know I've heard it since 1960s, the Lord's soon return. But never, never have we seen so many things happening. Never understood how America, what, why is America not playing a part in end times? People, we're not going to be here. America as we know it is going to be gone. Let's pray that it doesn't happen in November. Father, Lord, just take and uh, use it to your honor, to your glory. Lord, we love you. We care for you. Help us to pick up your word daily, to read it, to put it to practice in our life, to let people see the love through us that you have for us, that we can have fellowship one with another, that we can go to our brother or sister, whoever they are, and, and they'll pray for us or help us in any way they can. Thank you for pastors that love you, pastors that care for people. Lord, just bless them and keep them safe. Be with our missionaries, wherever they are. I pray that you watch over them. Thank you for bringing Brother Munson home. And Lord, he's doing his two weeks quarantine. Lord, just be patient with him. And Lord, just use him in a mighty way when that time is over. Thank you for all our missionaries on the field. Lord, it's rough for them too. Lord, just encourage them. And we pray for Brother Terry. Lord, you know all about the situation. You're in charge, and we just trust you to answer all the problems in Jesus' name. Amen.